about the mix up my ipad just decided to reboot all of a sudden it's plugged in so it's not like it was out of juice or anything uh, we'll wait for people to hopefully come back over this way i'm so sorry totally out of my control and i'm gonna also pull this new one back up on my phone so i can read the new chat comments although we're not gonna do all the hellos <laughs> Let's see. And it still got me live at the other one, too, which is so weird. All right. So I see some of you all are back over here. I'm just trying to wait for the ad to end here. Okay. My goodness. I hate when stuff like that happens, especially when it's out of my control. I can see if I made a mistake, but I'm just sitting here talking, <laughs> minding my own business, <laughs> and get kicked out. So that means I'm going to lose a lot of people. So thank you guys for um, coming over here into the second session here. Okay, thanks, Jennifer. She's letting me know that uh, the moderators are helping people to get switched over. Yeah, I try to just put a comment in the chat box if I can, and hopefully somebody reads it and then can keep saying it, because I have to then end that so I can go start a new one. So, so sorry, guys. All right, so I'm just going to lay out some blocks here. I think I have five of these to make with the burgundy star points. So I think I was going to do 10 with burgundy and then put some other colors. Now, because this block is so easy that the star points are the hardest part, I've decided if I don't like my uh, other color star points, I can always remake them. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm just laying out all of my burgundy because we know we love those. <laughs> and uh, thanks, everybody, for coming over into the new chat room. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Teresa said double thumbs up. Thank you, Teresa. Um, so I'm going to start by putting in my block pieces. So I'm just going to take two of these. Turn them so the corners are out. Yeah. Because I have a left and a right side. I have to remember that. <laughs> I have a reverse block. And anything that's not in that block can go down. No, this is turned. is turned wrong. <laughs> I'm glad I'm paying attention because this is what happens when I get sleepy. I just start sewing stuff. So I'm glad I'm paying attention. Yolanda Cooks, how much is a block amount? I, how much is a block? Amount? I don't know what you're asking me. Is you, are you asking for the uh, new kits? If you're talking about the new kits, they are um, $100. Uh, it'll be 95 if you use code BENTO, which ends today. And then plus 10 for shipping. So you're looking at 105 If that's what you're asking me. All right. Thanks, Tiffany. Just pin the first one I see. Hi, Diane57. I didn't see you in the other one. All right. So I should have two of these in every stack. 
guess. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to continue until we get five of these. I got my phone notifications on. Forgot that, huh? <laughs> That should be three. Now we're at four. Two of these. Two of these. As long as it's not the center square, we don't care. And this should be the last one. And I'm always looking at this stuff. It doesn't really matter, but I like to choose my right and wrong side. It's crazy. <laughs> right here. And right here. We get two of these. And that. And then we're just going to stack these in between. All right, so we got five blocks, I think, laid out. We'll find out. <laughs> As I saw if it's not correct. Let's see. I think Vicki Lemire came in. She wasn't in the other one. Vivian Calvi came back in. Hey, Larry Lewain. Just make sure I got all the new people joining. And... Um, if you sent me emails and retreat payments, uh, like yesterday evening through today, I haven't done any desk work, but I will be processing all of that. If you pay for an order, I'll make sure that I, um, send you confirmation on that kind of stuff too, if you haven't received it from me already. Also, for those that haven't received it, that's before that time, also check your spam mail to make sure that it's not in your spam mail. Um, by the time I got through processing orders today to make the Saturday mail, I was exhausted and I just couldn't do another thing. So I ended up taking my, I took a bath early. <laughs> so when I get off the live, I can go to sleep. Now I got four star general tomorrow and I'm not even cut for it. Okay. So that's going to be interesting too. I might be cutting doing the live. Who knows? I'm going to try to get it cut out. Either go to bed early and, and get up early or stay up and cut it and still get up early because <laughs> I still got to drive, but we'll see. So I'm just not prepared for Four Star General this month. And that's why a sew along is great because it motivates you. You don't have a choice sometimes. You just got to do it. Uh, Lynette, I'm here, so I don't know what's going on. Refresh your screen, Lynette. Okay, she's back. <laughs> Shirley says, learned a new quilting. Gosh, look up Halo Inspiration from the Isles of Man. I don't know anything about what she's talking about. <laughs> so, I have to do some research. Remo JS just came in, reminding people also to hit the thumbs up. I thought maybe I lost power again. I was hearing noise outside my door. <laughs> 
hopefully things will go right. I'm just chain piecing uh, units instead of working on one block. I'm just chain piecing all five of them. Thank you, Vivian. She says, I am loving the green fabric with the African print. Yes. <laughs> kind of like that throw up green, but it actually looks really good with these prints. Trying to see where I'm at. I'm at the top. So basically, I'm just sewing giant nine patches at this point because I've got all my units already sewn together. She says, Manic. All you quilters should look it up. Unbelievable. Okay. M A N X. Tiffany's also giving new people the links to join the Facebook group. If you do join the Facebook group, please answer the three questions so it just makes it a lot quicker for you to get into the group. And I know you're not a, a spammer. Make sure I'm in the right spot. <laughs> start holding pieces in your hand too long. You start turning them. Uh, working on the Brightly Quilt. That's by Cluck Cluck So. Um. You can get the pattern from Cluck Cluck Sew, or you can get it from Missouri Star Quilt Company, who also did a video on this as well. All right. I got my, uh oh, this one coming a little on the middle. Don't know what's up with that when I panty piece. Ian back. <laughs> All right. This is the last one. I know that. <laughs> this is the next to last. Uh, getting them out of order now. That's really good, isn't it? <laughs> one. is in order. I popped the red in the wrong spot. Move this over. So, okay. I can clean this mess up I'm making. goes before that one, so we'll just lay it here. <laughs> All right, one of these should have four. They're all tangled up now. <laughs> but I know this is the, uh, the one that has the four is the bottom of the other one. That's where I need to start, and then I'm, I won't be confused. All right, 
let's see who else has come in here. Hi, Liz Wilson. Welcome. Okay, Shirley is asking, what size does the block finish at 12 inches? Kevin's here. Say, hey, Miss T. Hey, T. Quilters. Just got back home from celebrating niece's birthday. Looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow. That is Kevin. <laughs> And Sue is also reminding people to thumbs up and to use T's affiliate links. Well, thank you. I have quite a few affiliate links posted down in the description box of all of my videos. Judy Plaster is here. T, did you rotary cut? or die cut your pieces for the brightly quilt block. Um I die cut what I could die cut and then um like I cut my squares and everything from the um die cut and then when I needed the rectangles, I cut the rectangles, the uh, width that I needed the rectangles. I cut a strip, and then I just ran it through on my strip dies to cross cut. So I used my die cuts, as my die cutting system as much as I could. So yes, I did die cut. Uh, Stephanie has says she has good news. I wanted to share with you some exciting news. I am featured in Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine as one of six interview quilters with disability. It's issue number 108 if you're interested. Now, that is awesome, Stephanie. That's pretty cool. Congratulations. <laughs> that is cool. Somebody was asking, Stephanie, how do you find that? And she said she ordered hers from Fat Quarter Shop. So that's pretty cool. Hi, Nancy. All right, let's see. We can finish this without creating a problem. Do the rest of this chain piece. Like I said, this is for five blocks, and I got another five that I need to make. They got different color star points, so we'll see how that goes when we get there. All right. This is the next. I actually dropped one of these blocks in here so that I could turn it to the wrong side to see where I needed to press my seams. Figured if I've already done it once, no need in recreating the project. So I can't remember from last week. next and a lot of people are saying congratulations to Stephanie thank you guys
Thanks, Diane, for giving people information. Larry says, does anyone else hate FedEx? I've been, <laughs> I've been watching on a package all day and been tracking, and now they say no information can be found. Yes, indeed, FedEx. Leave you hanging big time. And your box ain't even coming tonight. I'm going to tell you that right now from my experience. They do deliver on Sunday, so you might have a chance of getting it tomorrow. Yes, I hate that. This is the last one. Here. Been delivering my fabric boxes and I'm telling you I'm so excited it's coming and then all of a sudden you have a burst bubble <laughs> like nope no it's not all right so that's all of my lock zone that's why I was pulling because it was hanging over the desk I couldn't see it Alright. I'm gonna just press the disc. I'm gonna turn this over. So basically pressing out toward the rectangles and in toward the center circle. Real simple. Since these blocks are so big, I'm just using my um, wood press to just give the seam some memory here. And then I'm going to sew my entire block. And at the end, like off camera, <laughs> I'll press with an iron, a heated iron. So I was up. I've been up late every night this week so it finally caught up with me i've been getting five maybe six hours of sleep and then once i come in here i wake back up <laughs> so it doesn't really matter <laughs> i probably won't sleep again okay I'm trying to get some sleep but i do need to cut out four star general so we'll see what happens Spent today prepping the take five kit fabric, so they're nowhere near ready to be cut yet. But they are they are cut into approximate size for my die board, and now I need to sort them into cut orders before I can do that. So I'm just doing prep at this time so it just takes a while but some movement on it is better than no movement so they will be going out in March so just don't know when the people on my list are going to get their blocks first anyway so I've got you already on a list on the date that you actually place your order so I'll be starting to send out invoices for that, just so you all know, because um, as I get them done, I'll be sending those out. I'm not even going to try to do them all at one time. I'm just going to do, say, maybe six kits or nine kits, and then I'll send those out. Right. 
you need that vacation tea or at least a week of lazy like I'm doing. Yep, I do. I don't know how and when I'm going to get it in, but it's going to be soon. I'm going to have to take something off. I need to be trying to make sure I know what dates all my lectures are. I think I got two, could be even three in March, knowing me. <laughs> I need to be trying to look at my schedule on my computer, on my desktop. Starting to get hot in here. I got the fan on. It might be on low instead of medium. That might be the problem. And let's try some water too. Yep. I did not take off my month of January like I normally do. <clears throat> and I'm trying to get stuff shipped out so I'm not shipping when I do decide to take some time off. It won't be a whole month, but I might take <laughs> a week or something. But, and I'm not, I probably won't do any lives either. <laughs> normally I'll do my lives and that'll be it. I don't normally upload, but I haven't been uploading anyway, so... Maybe if I don't do the lives, maybe I might upload the video. I don't know. If I'm off doing everything else. Whew, I'm up here hot flashing. Remo says she's starting her March block. Yeah, it doesn't look, it's not a bad block, so. <clears throat> Got some quarter squares. And uh, that's it, for the most part. So it doesn't look too bad. I pulled my fabrics out already, I just haven't cut. I just couldn't even bring myself to cut. That's just crazy. The fabrics are laying on my long arm. I, well, I pulled fabrics for, for the batik one. I have not even looked at the red, white, black, and gray. So, I got two more over here. And I don't know if I'm even going to try to cut it tonight. I'm just going to cut one. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be behind. Technically, I'll be on time because I'm doing the March block, so, but I'll be behind for myself. So I'm trying to get these blocks out the way so when I finally do cut the four-star general, I can start piecing those because, yeah, I'm behind. <laughs> I have never been so behind in my life. Night, Vivian.
King James True says, before I start a new quilt, I'm going to seriously organize all my fabrics. <laughs> it makes it easier to shop from your home stash. It does for me when my fabrics are organized. If I know I need some orange, I can just go pull the whole sack of orange out and know that I'm not going to make a mess because I've got them nicely, neatly folded onto cardstock, magazine boards. Make them so that they 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 sit flat. I don't care how many ways I rolled, uh, folded my fabric. Once I took it out, it never went back in the same way, except for when I decided to put them on the magazine boards. I'm missing so many comments. Let me go back, make sure I'm not missing anything. So Sue is going to take off a week in April, so that's cool. She's going to catch up on her four-star general. Paula says, T, have two people in mind that I would like to see you make one of your kits into a quilt. I think the results will be interesting. The Quilting Marine and Tiffany's Quilting Life, just a thought. That's interesting. I'm sure he would love them, too. Tiffany likes all fabric. <laughs> Tiffany is a true fabric lover. And I, I can sometimes be a fabric snob. As far as I don't, you know, I'll use reproductions, but I don't see myself making a reproductions quilt. I'll use them in my scrappy quilts, but they would never, I, I can't see them being the focus, but who knows? There's no telling what I'll do. <laughs> Even when I did the Underground Railroad, I didn't even use reproduction fabrics when I had, you know, a good opportunity to. Joyce is here, Burl says, uh, hey everyone, I've been absent a while. My Juki died and I replaced it with a Juki TL 180QE. So congratulations on your new machine. Awesome, awesome. probably need to pull a lot of them off so that it doesn't hang over this desk and start pulling. <laughs> My machine's stitching double time trying to catch up. Um, Sheila, hi, Miss T. Is that green grunge you're using for your background fabric? Yes, it is. And I have the name of it. I can't remember. It was the one I just purchased from, uh, was it Whittles? When I did the haul video, I showed you all the grunge that I got from Whittles. It was this green, uh, some kind of coral, orange looking one, and a yellow. And I, I put all three of them up against my fabrics. These are the fabrics that are in, some of these fabrics are in the bento box kit. These were, I just cut me a five inch strip. <laughs> And uh, use it to cut my pieces from. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of scraps left over from cutting that. You use all the fabric. <laughs> Larry says that he organized his fabrics um, and said it found fabrics that never knew he had before. Yes, and that was one of the things I did. And then when I was wrapping my fabrics, I pulled out 
what I consider to be the god awful ugly. Why did I buy this fabric? And I just sold them all together into yardage. And then I used that for quilt backs. And so I still got a collection of that type of fabric. And even uh, last year when I was uh, downsizing, getting rid of stuff, I got rid of some of that yardage. I think Melissa LePage was the beneficiary of that. She got a lot of yardage pieces that I just either, I felt like somebody else could might do justice on the front of the quilt. I just wasn't in love with them anymore. So, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> Lynette's trying to finish a crown royal quilt for her brother. <laughs> He's harassing her for it now. <laughs> so she started it last year. I do have that on my to-do list, but I don't have anybody harassing me for it. It's for myself. I've been uh, collecting bags from my family of drinkers. I drink fruity stuff that feels good going down, whereas they drink real liquor. It's like I take one sip and it burns my throat, so... I'm not a drinker, not for real. So I have to depend on my family members to collect these bags for me. So. Yep, I got over 100 now. I think I can start cutting. But I got too many other things to do, right? <laughs> All these projects that come up. And I got two or three other projects that should have been done by now, but they're not. Because I'm playing with African fabrics. <laughs> and I do want to do just, um, take some just scraps and just sew them together not necessarily sh strings just sew whatever together because I think I got a few uh, family members that might like that um, this is one that's done but it's not pressed it's like what do you do with blocks that aren't pressed <laughs> I am gonna I'm gonna press them with my wood uh, press anyway just so that the memory of where I want the seam to go is there so I'll know where I want to press it when I get to my ironing board all right got two more to sew from this stack with the burgundy centers and then we start playing to see what colors will look good with these African prints other ones. At least the center square. I don't really care about the corner squares, but it's got a contrast from the center square. is saying that leftovers, old cloth, old cloth, and free donations from family and friends. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but yeah, I took the opportunity to, to take out of my stash what I no, no longer love, too. So, um, I'm behind again. I don't know what Tiff is saying. Thank you, Stephanie. She's reminding people to hit the thumbs up button. I'm going the wrong direction. Ellen saying good night. Good night, Ellen. Thank you so much for popping in. Uh, Kevin, to my Miss T won't use repos for an entire quilt, unlike her good friend Kevin the quilter, and she calls me a fabric snob. <laughs> Alatone on tone, yeah, or tone on tone, yeah. Because that's what, when I first met him, that's what I saw him using was more tone on tone. So I didn't realize that he did more reproduction. And then as I grew to know him more, I said, oh, he's a reproduction person. But he likes making old quilts. 
redoing old quilts. So it makes sense. But I never, ever would have thought that he would have made a quilt with African fabrics, okay? <laughs> never, ever. And I felt like he was just telling me, oh, those fabrics are pretty. And I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm thinking he's just pacifying what I'm doing. And he's like, I, I really like them. I'm like, you do? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's it for that. I gotta get the weight off of here. And I'm gonna just lay out one block and see what it looks like with the other colors. Get your opinion. Let's see. It says have a few fabric snobs in our gill. Oh no, you can use sheet for backing. Oh no, you can't use sheet for backing. That's just not done, laughing out loud. Yeah, they used to do that all the time. And I'm sure those quilts are still around. And it's so weird because sheets last so many years. And think about how often and how much we use sheets and how long they last. So it's just amazing to me when people tell you what you can't do. T, have you made the Underground Railroad with African fabrics? I think I'll try it. No, not yet. Sue, you were kind enough to give me a huge bag of scraps. Yep. Sue donated um, uh, books for retreat. So those are be at retreat. Some of them, I'm not bringing all of them. Some of them will be at retreat. Diane says harassment makes her not work when people are bugging her. <laughs> it depends on who's doing the harassing and how they're doing it. It can be cute. When somebody really wants a quilt, that's really uh, nice. And if they're not, like, bugging you, bugging you, but, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Made uh, use. Uh, King James says, before quilting, I made a lot of nightgowns and house dresses out of sheets. Okay. Tiffany talking about eating bacon again. <laughs> oh, talking about she need a snack and y'all asking her if it's bacon. So I'm sure it's going to be really pretty. I've seen one online done with African Fabrics, the uh, Eleanor Burns version of the Underground Railroad. So I have seen it done with uh, African prints. Hi, Dolores Feltz. and says she used to make everything she wore and thank goodness she don't have to do that again yes i made clothes because i enjoyed wearing them and i like that they were unique and it was also cheaper to make your clothes than purchasing your clothes and i don't think that that's true today um i think you can get um clothing pretty reasonable now and fabric is more expensive than buying your own clothing <laughs> And Kevin's messing with me. I love African fabrics, Miss T. <laughs> uh, there were some African vendors at QuiltCon. Hey, Melissa LePage, reminding people to hit the thumbs up. <laughs> but Nita's asking Kevin what's on the menu tomorrow. Now, I think Kevin has forgotten because we don't made some other plans, but I was supposed to be bringing, he's never had, I don't know if you all, if your Aldi's have, I forget the the brand name, but it's Miss Something Pizza that are handmade pizzas that you just put into the oven. And I buy the Meat Lovers, or the, no, the Deluxe, not the Meat Lovers. I buy the Deluxe. It's got everything on it. It doesn't have mushrooms, and that's why I buy it, because it's got everything but mushrooms. And that pizza is so good. I don't know if you all have, are able to get an Aldi's pizza, 
uh, but they are so good. So I'm supposed to be bringing uh, all these pizza, so because Kevin's never had it. However, I do have the pizza in my deep freezer, so I'm gonna bring Kevin the pizza and he, and he can eat it later. But we're talking about going out to eat after the live, so that's what's happening. We're trying to. Um, I'm still. You know, because of COVID and things going on, this is what I do for retreat. It's a lot of things that you all don't see behind the scenes, but we go try restaurants out because we're going to eat out Friday night. And pre-COVID, the restaurant that I picked was a great place to eat. Kevin and I have since gone back there last year sometime. I can't remember when. And uh, they were, I don't know if it was a lunch thing, because when I went before, it was a dinner meal. But I don't know if it was a lunch thing or not, but the the servings were small and the prices were very hefty. And uh, I don't mind paying for good food. It was very good food. <laughs> but it was like we were eating off baby plates. And I'm like, I don't eat a lot of meat or stuff. I like sides. But these plates came out where you saw... I'm going to say 65 to 70% of the plates were empty. <laughs> it was all pretty and very well uh, presented because it's a, uh, a five-star restaurant. But I felt like people were going to leave there hungry. <laughs> so I don't know if that's what's happening at dinner. I have not gone back since for dinner. So uh, we're in the process of just trying out some new places just to see where we want to uh, where I perhaps want to take uh, people for our Friday night meal where we eat out. So, so that's why we're, that's, well, that's not why we're eating out. We're eating out because we like food. <laughs> we like good food, okay? <laughs> Woo-wee! Joe Carmel Perkins is here, just getting off work. Glad to catch the chat. Well, welcome. And T quilts, I don't do many clothes anymore, now retired and disabled, yeah. But I love making my own clothes because people couldn't get them. And I had people stopping me, asking me, where do you buy your clothes from? And I could proudly say, I made them myself. <laughs> You'll never get it. That's what's going on in my head. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow kevin said you can still bring the pizza to miss t you know i eat and eat and eat and eat yeah so don't eat breakfast then in the morning i'll bring the uh pizza and we can just pop it in the oven soon as i get there then we'll have some time between that and dinner we can always bring dinner home too so diane talking about she hungry girl i'm hungry uh, Brenda says, I have had all these pizza and it's delicious. Yes, it is. I'm telling you, and I, I don't, I ordered one time they were out of the deluxe and I ordered the meat lovers and it was not as good to me as the deluxe, but I have always gotten a deluxe pizza with everything on it. And every time I've uh, had that pizza, it's good. It's better than buying a pizza out. It's a good pizza. Paula says, oh, bet that Underground Railroad turned out beautiful with the African fabrics and the batiks. I don't know what they used. I can't remember what they used in the background, but I know they had African fabrics. Kevin talking about, where is the beef? <laughs> you got that right. Joyce Hernandez says, good night, T and everyone. Good night, Joyce. And Judy Smith's also leaving. Good night, Judy. <laughs> Grandson wants her phone. Aren't these children something else? <laughs> my nephew, when he was my great nephew, two and three years old, he's running that phone and little bitty thumb flicking, you know, scrolling. I was like, what in the world? He looked like a professional scroller, okay? <laughs> My goodness gracious. Okay, so what colors do we have here? We've got some beige points, red points, light gray points, some navy blue right there, 
And then we also have some gray points. So we'll see what these look like. Now that I've mixed up my two stacks. No, they're still separated by the squares. Thank God. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think. All right. So what I'm going to do is lay out the points first because... I want to make sure whatever center square I use, that it contrasts. So we've got dark gray in here. Diane says, I had to make my clothes. I was a big girl and they didn't make pretty clothes in my size, so I did, yes. <clears throat> so good to speak with ladies with similar interests, yes trying to figure out if I want to go light or dark so now I'm just playing <laughs> I got my requirement done right the five blocks but I do want all of these done I'm trying to see which one I want to put in the middle how about pink and gray that looks pretty or teal and gray would be I think we're going to do pink and gray. So that one's done. <laughs> now I can put the other pieces on. One, two. In the corner. Up here. Pink and gray. Looks good. <laughs> Cosmic lights. I'm already having a hard time turning off my soul brain, and now I discover late night soul groups laughing out loud. It's over. Laughing out loud. Well, welcome, Cosmic Light. Appreciate you popping in a comment to us. Hopefully, you'll subscribe. I'm here every Saturday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for two hours live sewing chat. Also have regular chat on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're having a special chat tomorrow at 12 noon where I'm sewing with Kevin the Quilter on a sew along. We're doing the Four Star General. So we tend to have fun with that. So if you do, please subscribe. You'll get notified. Also hit that notification bell. I don't know why that fabric was costing $17 a yard. All right, let's see if we can find something that will look pretty with this one. I want this one in there. I like this teal. So I don't know. Let's see if this navy will look cute. It's got a little blue in it. It might look cute with that. So this is when I have fun now. Get to choose squares and fabrics. The corners doesn't matter. <laughs> the corners do not matter as long as they're not repeats. All right, that'll look good. And we're going to go with light gray next. Anything will look good with that. All right, need a center square. We can put this one in with light gray. All right, so that's three. Well, I only got two of those. So I need to do that for light gray. Okay, two of these <laughs> and two of these. As long as it's not the center square. One, two, three. All right, now we're up to red. Hi, 
Hi, Sue Baker. <laughs> Sue says, I'm already on it. I love this. Well, thank you. <laughs> Lynette says, it's her sister that's giving her projects in the middle of trying to get his quilt done. Right. <laughs> Tell her to stop. And Darlene says, I only buy one on sale and I find fabrics. Maybe that's why FedEx always does good for me. They know my address. <laughs> All right, so I just put red here. You got to find a center square for red. You don't want the red one that's got red in it. I don't think it's too much red in the corner. This one has just a little red. That would be cute. We'll leave that. <laughs> Last one. Beige. Oh, I didn't put the corners on. <laughs> on the red. I can't put the I can't put the corners on until I put the center in so I know what I'm using. So that's two. And then I've got two over here. And I only have two each of these left. So I can't use the center. I think I have a center with any of those anyway. So now we're with the beige. All right. I can do this one with the center. Whoops. Put this blue one in there. just playing with fabric now. <laughs> this is totally unnecessary. I could have just sewed it up, but you know. All right. All right. So we've got five blocks that we've sewn. I'm going to start chain piecing these. Let's see what I missed. King James to my, I started my first quilt learning to use my scraps. No plan. It turned into a monster mess. <laughs> and sometimes when people say that, somebody else like it. Because I remember I made what I thought was an ugly quilt. And then as soon as I got it quilted, the lady says that there was somebody there that had wanted to purchase it. And I'm like, you can't purchase my quilt now. A quilt that I wasn't attached to because somebody else wanted to buy it. Now I wanted to keep it. And I so wish that I had sold that quilt. It's like, you know, somebody likes something better than you and they willing to pay for it, give it to them, you know? Well, the problem at, uh, when you go to national quilt shows, you got to remember that prices are going to be higher. The reason why prices are higher at national quilt shows is because these people are paying up to $2,000 per one table of space. They'll give you like a eight foot of space or something, 10 foot of space. And you can, and then when you start adding on, when you see those large booths, those people have spent, you know, three to $5,000 easily for space. If you're thinking about every 10 foot of space being, uh, having to be paid for. So it can be costly. That's why a lot of the, you know, when you see those little bitty ones, I try to duck into them because they're either new people on the market or, you know, they're a small business that can't afford to pay, you know, thousands of dollars for booth rental. Booth rental is not cheap. And I'm sure they didn't take it down because of COVID. I'm sure it probably increased because of COVID because those convention centers want their money. So, and then they've got to make money too. So, uh, yeah, it, it's expensive. I found that out from a, uh, one of my friends that then that I helped. I had two of them actually that I was uh, that I know 
uh, personally that been at national shows. It's expensive. Yeah, you have to be real selective. That's why I tend to buy more notions if I am going to get stuff because most of the notions will stay at the same price. Most notions. But that fabric, honey, they're going to get you on that fabric. So, yeah. So, let's start chain piecing these through here. Hopefully, no mishaps. I haven't pressed. Let me get this lady here. So yeah, it's uh Kevin been trying to get me to be in. I'm like, I don't have money to pay them for that. <laughs> that's a lot of money. And that's just a weekend. That's they charge you what you would pay someplace for a whole month. And you still gotta get there with your product and set it up. It's expensive to be in. <laughs> King James to my fabric and hamburger getting out of my price range. <laughs> Kobe, it ain't no joke. So. And it's never going to go down either. No matter what prices you're paying now, you're never going to go down. I'm interested in seeing what the uh, lumber industry is going to do. If, is it ever going to go back to normal? Once people start collecting money for stuff, people willing to pay, it's never going to go down. I'm up here waiting to redo my kitchen because I'm waiting on the prices to go down. I told, I'm thinking, uh, now that me and my husband both are here, maybe we need to just start trying to tackle a part of my kitchen ourselves, you know, do a, a piece at a time. I just didn't want my kitchen to be down. It'll be down longer if we doing it over a professional. <sighs> you know, you got to eat. When I had the bathroom done, it was like, okay, we got another bathroom. It's no big deal. Now it's like we don't have another kitchen. been home. Yep, sometimes you just need a break. Which is where I'm about to go. I was going to do that today. I was about to cancel tonight's live. I said, no, let me get up because I just scheduled it today. <laughs> so, yep, at some point, I just, once I get through with the kit, I'll decide what I'm going to do at that point. my pieces. Okay, 
she got her pieces cut for tomorrow. That's pretty cool. I haven't even pressed mine. I just got them selected. Oh, gosh. Just the thought of that. <laughs> and I'm working on two of them, okay? Uh, I don't know if I want my red, white, and black one since I'm making it bigger. I don't know if I want to make all 12 blocks. So I'm undecided on that because it's going to be too huge. I need to put the size in EQ and see what size it is. Because I don't want a really long quilt. I just have a feeling it's going to be super long. All right. Well, the colors make it easy to know what goes with what. up last night. I started at 11 p.m. somewhere in that area and decided I was going to make two uh, pots of soup, two different ones, okay? And so I didn't know I was going to make two when I started because I only made the one. <laughs> and then I got the one done about, I don't know, 2 a.m. and then decided, okay, you can do a second one. And so what did I do? I make the second one. That's why I got sleepy. <laughs> I was up to about 5 o'clock uh, in the morning cooking and making t-shirts. I had a couple of t-shirt orders that I uh, people were, had ordered uh, with the... I had three t-shirt orders that were with the bento box. So I went ahead and made them. Normally, I don't make them that fast. I push them things off. But I went ahead and did them. Got them out the way because I didn't want to have it on my uh, over my head. It was it was stressing me out. So let's just get the t-shirts made and be done so you can get this package out. are going by. I'm missing stuff, guys. If you're talking to me. <laughs> Most of you are talking to each other. Professional services sometimes aren't quicker. Ask me how I know. Wow. That's a sue. Kevin, I don't think so. I don't know what Diane's talking about. Kevin, I don't think so. Sandra says, Tiff, have you used that binding thingy? Paula S. says, T. Quilts and Kevin as vendors. Yes. You will have a following. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually like being at the shows vending. Um, you get to talk to a lot of people. 
but it's a lot of work. Uh, at least you're sewing tea. I made two sew along. I made my two sew along Eric blocks today and put Minky backing together, and that's all I've done besides my long, long job of today. So, doing the videos. Hey, girl, much stuff is you doing today? You will have that caught up in no time, whatever you got on your to do list. You're my little speedy quilter, girl. You get them done, you knock stuff off. When you get your mojo back, you'll be right there. a lot for somebody that's got a lot of health uh, conditions too. I, I'm just I'm just surprised. <laughs> You're not gonna let it beat you, so I I enjoy seeing that. All right, last piece I'm adding. Everything has something assigned to it. So I used all the threes, maybe nine patches. saying yeah the kitchen is one of the best yep and we haven't done anything to our kitchen since we've been here so it is in dire need of a redo I started with the bathroom because that's <laughs> where I spend a lot of my time I like to take I like bat bathing and so I like to just either get my electronics and look at videos or read a book so yeah so that's what I started with and then I redid my porch my front porch on my house so I had some work done on the deck it needs to be repainted again it just don't the stain on deck just don't last long so it needs to be redone and I had a person that was reliable don't know what happened to him so got to find somebody else. All right, we're going to get to see some different colors in these stars now. Don't know how it's going to look in the end project. I don't think I'm going to change them regardless whether I like it or not. <laughs> it's so now. <laughs> Like it or not, it's a gunner. I like the burgundy with the grunge. So. Green grunge. But we can add some more color in there. So people don't think, you know, it's all burgundy stars. No, you gotta look again. Almost caught up on my four store journal working on last few border blocks. Went to enter Eric and his one done contest. That's funny. Okay. Eric on the probably have one of his uh 
Kool-Aid bottles, you know. <laughs> He's only been in, been in here by now. So. Right. Let's, uh, I'm going to get all of these done tonight. I didn't realize I was going to get all 10 of them done, but I guess when you do the star points, that's the most tedious part. You get those out of the way, it goes pretty fast. saying she needs a new kitchen. All my cabinets and, and bathroom with a walk-in tub. Okay. No, I didn't do the walk-in tub thing. Um, she quotes, how long have you been quilting? I've been uh, sewing since 1986, quilting since 1994. I've wanted to sew all my life. My sister um, made clothes for us when we were younger, and I've always wanted to own a sewing machine, and I didn't get my first one until I was 21, I think. <clears throat> yep. Been a while. First row sewed over there. Put that up. Gray. Nope, I got two. I see blue and light gray. <laughs> They're not going fast as I like. <laughs> They really are going fast. It's just not, not as fast as I'm thinking I'm sewing. The nice thing is once I press, I'm pressing the whole block so I don't have to press when I sew the next row together. So it'll be quicker to do the next sew. And I just have to press my rows. too my mom sewed and I always saw it as part of being a homemaker that's all I've ever wanted to be that's it I didn't realize I was poor growing up <laughs> my mom did a very awesome job considering my father passed when we were five when I was five not when we was five when I was five and uh, you know things happen, you just think, oh, it's just, you know, it'll be taken care of. We always had plenty of food. We always invited friends over to eat. My mom never said, you know, don't do that. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's probably one of the reasons why I feel like, you know, everybody should have food, no matter what. Um, if I see somebody you know, needing a meal. I don't care if they're faking or not. I, I just buy the meal because that's what I do. I would give people that don't need uh, money for food, food. So why wouldn't I give somebody that needs food, food? So I don't care. I just don't give them money out on the street anymore. Although, 
you know, there's two sides to that too. So, but I will buy them too. If they're if they're about a restaurant begging or something like that, I'll just buy them some food. Doing ages, I'm not gonna read ages in the comment. King James, but I didn't know we were poor either, but we were. And see, that's the thing. You know, I really didn't know we were poor. We had our own, my, we had a house that she paid for. We had, my mom always had cars. Um, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> we were poor. <laughs> it could always be worse, but we were poor. Had no inkling of, you know, as a child, you know, and growing up, even into my teenager, it wasn't until I was like, probably once I graduated high school when I really started paying attention to the bills because I was working, I started working at age 16. And so I just, I, I reduced the burden of my mom on myself and I just saved my money and anything that I needed, I just bought myself. And, uh, so that helped her some too, but um, she wouldn't take any money from me living in the house. So I just made sure that I took care of everything I needed. I paid for all my school, my uh, high school graduation stuff like that. My own glasses, because I started wearing glasses when I started working. I realized I needed glasses, but I wouldn't tell her I need glasses because I didn't want that to be another burden. So was like I just took care of some things myself um, but yeah and even when I was doing that I still didn't really think we were poor it wasn't really until I was 18 uh, my mom um, I was uh, starting to like look at that's when the utility bills came on the little cards and you really start paying attention to how much stuff costs. And that's when I realized how expensive it was. So, I'm like, oh my God, how did she do this? I would have dropped all eight of us off at an orphanage. <laughs> if my husband died and left me with eight children to take care of. But, you know, that's she's from the South and, you know, you get through things as a mother. She was just a good mother. Like I said, we had so many friends over, she never put anybody out. And I'm sure a lot of them didn't have food at their houses while they were hanging out at our house. <coughs> so she was she was really sweet about that type of stuff. Just think of eight kids and how many friends eight children can have. <laughs> Welcome, Tracy, saying thanks for explaining the vending process. And then also, when you go to convention centers, the last thing on that vending, 
is the convention center always have a higher tax bracket too. Uh, it's like they they do something with the law to allow them to do that because taxes are high too. Miss a lot. <laughs> um, see, I agree with you about the food situation. We have so much hunger in this country. Waste so much food, and the law or so a business can't just give food away at the end of the day. Yes, and that's sad that when a restaurant is closing and stuff, places have got to put stuff in the trash instead of taking it to a center somewhere where somebody can eat it. It is. It's really sad that they can't give food away without, you know, we're also a country that people will sue you for anything. So, and I think that's probably part of it. Blessing. <laughs> All the blocks are done. Now I get to lay them out and play with the colors. See where I want to put them. Or if I need to switch anything. Like make a different block. I'm, I would make one block, but I'm not going to make all five of them. <laughs> so they're going in the quilt. <laughs> if I... Uh, have to make one additional block, I would do that. But not a lot of blocks. Yeah. This quilt's going to be what it's going to be. As long as it's got some, some of these little African prints in it, that's all I want. cut this machine off because yeah we're done I'm just making sure I thought I saw a raw scene all right so we'll press these open we still got 13 minutes doing really good today chatting and sewing <laughs> Same, oh, talking to Paula, saying watched the Undercover Boss last night, and it was the CEO from Round Table Pizza. OMG, the number of pizzas that were tossed out due to mistakes. Yep. So that one was a burgundy one. So this is light gray coming up. I'll show you these colors, even though they're not pressed with an iron, a heated iron anyway. Got a little wood press. not flat till I press it. But this is the one with the light gray. Looks really pretty. Mothers back then found a way to get it done. Mine also blessed them. Yes, Sue. I, I'm just amazed. And I, you know, I, I think we inherit that from our parents. Some of that is passed down. Some people get it. <laughs> and some of these children now where they don't want to work, uh uh, they they got a whole nother set of stuff happening. This one's the darker one, navy blue. Um, 
Heck, I thought everyone ate beans and potatoes for a lot of meals. <laughs> you know what? The funny thing is, I actually love beans. <laughs> I eat just about all of them. Black eyed peas are my least favorite, but I will eat them. I, I would never make them, but I'll eat them. <laughs> Oops, I didn't show you. Pink and gray. Thank you, Sin. No Carmel says, enjoy the chat. Good night. And I hope a sneak peek of Tease and Kevin at work tomorrow. Yes. Good night. Take care. Be safe going to work. Diane says, you put trust in God to help. Yep. Thank you, Elvita. Paula says, back in the day, we had home-cooked meals, which was the best meal. No fast food. Yes. My mom made biscuits and everything from scratch. I have never made biscuits from scratch. I've made bread, but I've never made biscuits. I do miss homemade biscuits. I don't know if I showed you that <laughs> page. And again, they're not pressed. So... They'll be a lot prettier once I do my press. This up, that up, and this is the red one. So we're going to have uh, five of them are different colors, and then I have ten that are the maroon color. So they're going to be spotted around the quilt some kind of way. So I have to lay it out now to see. This is a nice, pretty press block. <laughs> and see the back of the block. This is what I was looking at to see where the, uh, how I was pressing my seam. So I've had my block wrong side up all night. But, yeah, I like that my blocks are just as pretty on the wrong side. Thank you, Tiffany. She says, can't wait to see it all together. Me too. <laughs> looking forward to it. Thank you, Leisha. Thanks, Paula. Uh, King James says, I found I had an old sock drawer donor that may work as a seam presser. Now, that's cool. Uh, Paula says, T, that block is awesome. Thank you. So does Arlene. It's beautiful. Larry, I think the closest fast food we had was burgers from White Castle. Yes, and that's what we had was White Castles. And they were... I mean, I'm sure they were cheaper, but I remember the lowest price for me was 12 cents. <laughs> Don't you love all those blocks? I have pinto beans. I eat those every day if I have to. Yes. You, yeah, you, I can make do. I can eat a long time. Well, it's so funny to me when we have storms and everybody go run to the store. It's like that's the time, the perfect opportunity to clean your pantry out. I do not have to go to the store. I got so much stuff I can eat. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Tiffany. Yeah, she was saying she can't wait to see it. Thanks, Liz. Darlene says, Mom always cooked our meals. We didn't know what fast food was either. Yes, only time we had fast food, uh, because we were from the south and we live in uh, Missouri, St. Louis area, we always went on road trips to visit. My mom would just get off on Friday, and we just go on go down for just the weekend. So eight hour plus ride to just go visit family for a, what about thirty six hours and come right on back home. But we were on the highway a lot. That's the only reason we knew what that was. And most times she sometimes would pack stuff. And the only reason we knew because we had to stop and use restrooms and stuff. And all the time, you couldn't just stop at the state rest areas sometimes. So some states were close, and then other ones were farther away before you got to the, uh, you know, the next rest area. Especially when you got a lot of kids in the car. <laughs> so, yeah. Sue says, blocks are great. I like that lime color, too. Well, thank you. So I'm looking forward to laying this out now and seeing what it's going to look like. So that's going to be pretty cool. Thank you, King James. It's nice shade of green. C 
ends, reminding people to hit the thumbs up on your way out. Appreciate that. We only got five, six more minutes in here before we leave. So on your way out, please hit the thumbs up button for me. Also subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. I appreciate that as well. Uh, cool Gal says, Formula L and buttermilk makes the best biscuits. I buy it from Food Lion. I don't know what she, I have never even attempted to make the biscuits. I've never even talked to my mom about how she used to make biscuits. But yeah, that was one of my favorite times because, and we didn't have a biscuit cutter either. We just used a cup or a glass, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Lynette. Thanks, Sandra. People are saying the blocks are pretty. Thank you. Beautiful and bright. Love them. Did anyone remember Top Hat, Top Hat hamburgers along with White Castle? Now, I don't know anything about Top Hat, but that's probably because I was the first one in my family born in the Midwest. A lot of restaurants uh, usually originated in the South and then moved up North. And the food changed, too. The food was a lot better in the South than when it moved up North, too. Our bus ride. <laughs> oh. Good night, Joyce. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Top Hat Burgers in 1972 had a special. $10 for a dollar. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and Sue says her mom packed most on the road. I remember her cooking every day. The only reason she probably didn't pack, like, everything because, like I said, she would get off work, and then we would leave straight from after work. So it was like whoever was ready to go when she was ready to roll. My mom kept clothes in her trunk that she always kept two or three outfits so she could just go home anytime she wanted to. And my aunt was the same way. My, uh, my mom and uh, my dad moved here. He was in the military. And uh, uh, other family members followed us up here afterwards, you know, as the years go on and stuff. So, pretty cool. Just finished putting binding on the baby quilt. First time doing binding. That's Nancy. Well, congratulations. Getting it all done. It's a good feeling when you get that binding on there. Sian said there was no such thing as fast food when I was growing up. Of course, that was back in the dark ages. <laughs> Diane says, bus ride was 18 hours to Grandma's house in North New York. And that was some of the other things we wanted to go visit. And sometimes my mom couldn't take us. And we would, we loved Greyhound and Trailways back then. They were, had nice uh, bus stops, had video games in there. We'd be playing games in uh, waiting on our next bus to come. We didn't have a problem. She would send us sometimes for a couple weeks in the summer and stuff. So. We had no issues uh, riding the bus. Now, not so much. <laughs> uh, Liz is asking, what time will I be on tomorrow? It'll be 12 noon Central Standard Time. I'm not sure what time zone you're in. Uh, 12 noon. Good night, Shirley. Yeah, hot water cornbread's good, too. Kathleen says, thank you, T. You all kept me company while I was dealing, working on things. I remember McDonald's was only five cents. Wow, for a cheeseburger. Hamburger was less than three cents, if memory serves me correct. 1968-69, girl. I ain't even know nothing about that. I was barely, I was walking, <laughs> but just barely walking, okay? Chocolate treat, whispering, we love you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody that's leaving out. Appreciate you guys. Please hit the thumbs up on your way out as well. Betsy says, we never ate out unless our parents went out for the night. Okay. We always had plenty of food. Uh, I think our one obsession was, well, we had two. We would eat White Castle, but it was uh, Chinese food. We've always loved uh, rice, fried rice and noodles. So, yeah, that was our thing that we could get on our own that was in, you know, in the neighborhood off the main road. So, 
<laughs> and Kathleen says, I love to eat at Woolworth's Diner. I miss that store even now. Now, what I love from Woolworth's was the peanuts and candy corns because they had them under the heat lamps, and they were always nice and warm, so the candy corn was never stale all year. So the only time I eat a peanut and candy corn now is during the month of Halloween when they make fresh uh, candy corn. But, yeah, Woolworth's was my place. I would ride the bus to go get that uh, candy corn, okay? Peanuts and candy corn. That's the, the uh, four-star general so along with Kevin's at noon tomorrow, uh, Diane. <laughs> Chocolate Treat wants somebody to send her some hot water cornbread. I miss Woolworth's and hot shop it shops cafe a uh, cafeteria and i don't know that one up here i want the laugh out loud i want to, wasn't allowed to eat a burger of my own you had to share it with a little sister <laughs> we were poor but my grandparents were loaded now i know why laughing out loud. yeah they keeping her money <laughs> Sue says, I remember 1968 well. Phoenix got a Taco Bell five item on the menu, all 19 cents. <laughs> uh, good night, folks from King James. I remember Woolworths, too. So, yeah, we never went anywhere except church. That's Diane. I, we went to church. Well, I went to church. All my siblings didn't go. I had a neighbor that ended up uh, becoming my godparent. Uh, and I went to church relig religiously. That's where I thought I could sing. Because this particular church let everybody sing whether you could sing or not. So I kind of got mad at them when I realized I couldn't sing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we're going to go ahead and end here, guys. It's 10.01. Good night, everybody. Come back tomorrow at 12 noon Central Standard Time for uh, sewing on the four-star general with Kevin and Fulcher. Well, I hope we're going to be sewing because we might both be cutting. Ain't no telling what's going on. But I'm going to go try to uh, get me something to eat, and then I'll see if I need sleep or if I'm going to cut. Otherwise, um, you know, I'll be cutting at Kevin's house because I doubt if I get up early enough to cut the whole thing out. But I'm going to try to cut out at least my boutique one, the requirement, and not worry about the other one, the, uh, my second one right now. So good night, everybody. You all stay safe. Be blessed and quilt out, everybody. <laughs> no, I can't sing. Can't carry a tune in a bucket, Diane.